لومړي ځل لپاره په تاریخ کې د سلطنت ظلم استبداد روغتونی بقایا او د نادرخان د کورنۍ قدرت پای ته ورسېد On April 27th, in the middle of the cultural convention in Kabul, tanks rolled into the city, surrounded the presidential palace, and opened fire on the building and the regime of President Dawood. Air attacks followed. That night, tanks and men battled in the streets. Machine guns, artillery, fire. Rumors, fear, death. By Saturday morning, April 29th, it was clear that the military coup d'etat had been successful. President Dawood had been killed and his government crushed. This is the postscript published in the 1978 edition of the yearbook of the Lahore American School in Pakistan. My name is Maha Hussain. I attended LAS from 1975 until I graduated in 1979. My school was one of six American schools that formed the South Asian Interscholastic Association. We had four schools in Pakistan, one in Afghanistan, one in New Delhi, India. Um, all six schools met four times a year for soccer, basketball, softball, field hockey, and American football tournaments, as well as a cultural convention that usually took place at the uh, last quarter of the year. We were in the auditorium setting up for our multimedia show that evening um, when our chaperones came in and ordered us out to the student center. Running across the courtyard, some of us noticed tanks at the gate and were reminded of events that had taken place in Pakistan the previous year. Uh, when Prime Minister Zulfikar Ali Bhutto was overthrown by Zia al-Haq. At the Student Center, we were told that kids whose host families lived uh, in downtown residential areas, namely Shari Now and Chicken Street, had to be moved to uh, the two other residential areas, um, namely Cardassay and Kardachar. My host family, the uh, director of USA to Afghanistan, his wife and daughter, uh, lived in Cardassay. I was assigned two younger kids from my school and my friend from Karachi got four kids from her school and before we got on the bus we ended up with three more kids from Marie Christian School and the International School of Islamabad. At first I didn't feel anything. It was all happening so fast and I didn't have any time to process any of it. When my host family uh, called my friend from Karachi and myself and being the oldest kids in the house uh, to explain to us what was going on, what was expected of us because we had to help them with the younger kids. Um, it was, feelings were really not allowed to come into play at that point. And when it finally hit me, I realized that I had to, to step up for those who were younger than myself, to be strong for them. And I promised my host and his, uh, and his wife that I would be strong as did my friend from Karachi. So we, we didn't get a chance to, f to feel the full effect or to really be scared until later on, uh, until the next morning, basically. Before we could get dinner on the table that night, a nearby blast caused all the windows to shatter on the main floor and we had to run out to a woodshed in the garden. When things got a little quieter, we managed to get back into the house to grab enough food and beverages to keep everybody fed and watered through the night. Did we know exactly what was happening? Um, no, not in any detail, but we knew enough to understand the gravity of the situation and we knew it was not good. Um, our host obviously had a way of getting some news. He and a colleague of his from the U.S. Embassy who was staying with us would venture into the house every once in a while and come back with updates. We assumed that they were making calls or listening to the radio or watching TV. What we didn't know at that point was that all utilities were cut off. Very early the next morning, revolutionary soldiers killed the two chokidars or guards outside my host family's gate, marched onto the grounds and didn't take too long to find us and drag us out of the woodshed. We were lined up against the wall with guns pointed at us while my host and his U.S. Embassy colleague uh, were taken by some of the guards into the house. The rest of us stood at the wall for what felt like years and not just an hour and a half or two uh, that they needed to ransack the house, steal whatever they wanted to steal, destroy what they didn't, and confiscate radio equipment they found in the basement. My two young charges were absolutely terrified, and all I could think of to protect them was to keep them quiet. But when my host's dog jumped out of their uh, daughter's arms and yelped at one of the soldiers who decided to shoot the poor animal, uh, 
all hell broke loose, and it just felt like the nightmare would never end. The next day when curfews were lifted, our chaperones stopped by to check on us and to assure us that U.S. embassies in Afghanistan, Pakistan, and India were doing all they could to get us back home. And true to their word, we were driven back to school at dawn a couple of days later, where we were to get on AISK buses that would take us down across the Khyber Pass and to Turkum and to back to safety in Pakistan. It was very difficult to say goodbye to my host family, um, and it felt awful to think that we were leaving them behind. Thankfully, we later found out that uh, all the women and children were evacuated within the same 24 hours, and the men left shortly after. Once we were all on our buses, uh, U.S. Embassy staff members came on to give us our final instructions, which were basically, get in your seat, don't move until you're ordered off the bus in Pakistan. We were told that we were being watched the entire time we were driving down, and that under no circumstances were we allowed to attempt to get up, and that even if we needed to go to the bathroom, to do so quietly and just live with it until we could get off the bus. Some 13 plus hours later, we crossed the border onto Pakistani soil, where our delegation was met by a school bus sent by the International School in Islamabad. We were told that we would be staying there overnight and would leave to Lahore the following morning. That night, I was housed with a family I'd stayed with the previous year during the basketball tournament. Their daughter had graduated and left to the US, but they decided to invite me back when they saw my name on the list. As much as I'd wanted to to spend time with them and tell them all about our trip to Kabul and the nightmare that we, live, we just experienced, uh, I was too tired to do more than shower, borrow some of their daughter's clothes, and pass out. The next day we were driven to the train station where our school had booked an entire first class compartment for us to ride home in comfort. We were all too tired to talk on the trip back, but just shortly before we pulled into the train station, Lahore, our teachers asked us to draw all the curtains back and to enjoy the view. A few minutes later, we all went to bits at the sight of our entire student body, staff and administration, all of our parents, friends, and even the drivers and janitors from school, literally giving us a guard of honor at the, on the platform. It was then that the full effect of the experience finally hit me. And to this day, I still get choked up remembering that moment of absolute relief to still be alive in my understanding of how this experience had changed my life forever.